Hello, my name is Jim Hoda. Thanks for stopping by bloghman.com. Today we're going to talk about uh, a project we're working on here. It's, it's similar to something we've done before, um, but we're going to show you a few more of the details on how we do the setup. Uh, we will be machining uh, Ren material, Ren shape material, to create a prototype mold for urethane foam seat cushion for a chair. And we're going to show you some of the real simple procedures and steps that we use to try and speed up the process and gain repeatability in the uh, machining process. Uh, so enjoy. Okay, now got the workpiece uh, indexed into the machine and made it really fast. We dropped it in, the holes lined up couple basic uh, hold down clamps out on the very edge and as you can see we've got our our secret weapon loaded into the spindle um, it's a two and a half inch uh, Sandvik face mill 5 insert and with about a six inch extension on it I use this quite a bit um, even though it's not really intended for plunging well it isn't intended for plunging because it has no um, center cutting inserts um, with a material like this you can get away with it to a certain extent but based on the majority of the programs I run uh, with a Z-level rough it's not a problem too often but it makes for quick work to quickly get down and um, from a roughing standpoint get down to the basic uh, raw surface. Uh, the downside is with this machine that combination uh, extension face mill is, exceeds the weight limit of the tool changer or is very close to the weight limit and what I have problems with from time to time is it faulting on the tool change so what I basically do is my roughing program as a separate program I manually load the tool and do the roughing and then come back pull that out and then go do my semi rough and finishing so let's get started all right, we're back here again. We came out to check on our progress. Uh, we're about an hour or so into this. And uh, you can start to see the uh, stair-stepped effect, or it kind of looks like a topography map of uh, land. We're working our way down the Z-axis, uh, one layer at a time, and uh, that's about it. Okay folks, here we are, uh, looks like it, it uh, finished its roughing and it's uh, pretty straightforward, uh, looks great, uh, we removed a very large portion of the material uh, in the basic uh, Z rough that we ran with the two and a half inch face mill, uh, had a uh, 30 thousandths uh, stock left behind so we've got uh, a good safety factor there to go in and start doing our semi-rough and finishing uh, programs to clean up this surface. Okay, here we are. We're starting our uh, semi-rough or finishing uh, program. It's going to consist of uh, planar cuts basically, with, with uh, starting with a three-quarter inch ball and I believe we're running around 100 thousand step over and we'll just keep stepping down on cutters and tighter step overs and doing a 45 degree crisscross pattern. And um, that's really all, uh, all it's gonna take to finish this one. All right, as you can see, we've kind of backed up a minute. Uh, I had made an error in judgment with the original cutter I chose. I chose a traditional uh, two-flu ball-nose cutter and it just didn't have anywhere near the uh, length I needed to um, accommodate the dramatic uh, contour this uh, surface has. As you can see off to the right it's very high compared to in the middle and one of the problems we face with this particular machine, the VF5, is on the column you can see back here there is a, about a four inch drop in the uh, in the housing with respect to the spindle and where that becomes a problem is on the very front surfaces here uh, like say over here either here or where we started when we're reaching down to that lowest point it's going to crush the workpiece in the back 
because of that four, four and a half inch uh, drop. It's, it, I think it only occurs on the VF5 for whatever reason, and it's caught me out a few times before, and I'm uh, glad I realized it uh, today before I wrecked this part as well. So now we're back underway. All we did is we put a uh, three quarter inch uh, button on a, I think it's about a six and a half inch um, shank and we got plenty of cutter hanging out. Uh, a lot of that noise you're hearing is uh, you pick up a lot of vibration and um, howling through that. But uh, again, because of the material we're cutting, we can cheat and get away with, get away with a lot of uh, maybe unconventional techniques. As you can see, we're in the next step of our uh, finish pass. Uh, we're dropped down to a half inch ball. Uh, again, with a basic planer cut, I believe we're doing a 30,000 step over and we're at uh, 45 degree angle again, more or less, with respect to the um, X axis. And this is 90 degrees with respect to the first uh, semi rough pass that we did. So basically, we just keep crisscrossing, uh, which seems to be a real simple way to get a smooth surface when you get to uh, corners and, and uh, major transitions. Um, zoom in here and take a look. As you can see, um, the basically the line here. And we also had left some negative stock on the first pass. Just because uh, I think it was 20 thousandths negative stock um, was left because when we were doing our uh, semi-rough, we were being a little bit aggressive with what we were doing in certain areas where I knew there was more material than the cutter could handle, so I'm going to get shatter, and then this way I don't actually dig into the A surface of the geometry, and then I come back through here, all the materials moved out of the way, and it's, it's pretty much a more predictable path that we can follow and then we just jump right down to zero, zero material and um, get a pretty clean surface. Okay, we are now in uh, home stretch here, we're on the final pass and uh, as you can see it's just a uh, the 45 degree uh, opposite side we're coming at it and um, we should be done here in a couple hours. This concludes the finished program. As you can see, uh, turned out pretty good. Um, got a pretty good smooth surface. And uh, not a whole lot of trouble. Okay, we pulled this uh, half of the mold out of the machine, and just for fun, I thought I'd show you the other half. This is the mating half. We didn't really go over this in detail, but we did it with the exact same procedures. Uh, some of the pocketing in here is quite a bit deeper, um, and of course, so we dropped down with a smaller, smaller tool, but. In the end, it was the same process, and um, I hope this helps.